Wheat is thought to have evolved where birds ate fish and where grass-eating animals did not exist. But it's a grain with no protective prickles or hard outer shell. The early Egyptians noticed that grasses grew more luxuriantly where cattle trod their seeds into the earth. The ground was broken with a stick and so soil was first tilled and agriculture developed. In Australia, agriculture started in 1788 with Captain Philip. It is our will and pleasure that you do immediately after landing, after taking measures for securing yourself and the people who accompany you, proceed to the cultivation of land, distributing the convicts for that purpose in such manner and under such inspectors or overseers and under such regulations as may appear to you to be necessary and best calculated for procuring supplies of grain and ground provisions. Australia's first attempts at wheat growing failed due to the rocky sandstone soil near the coast. Convict James Roos was pardoned and granted experiment farm near Parramatta. Within 15 months he produced enough grain to support himself and his wife. Several years later the colony was self-sufficient in grain in a normal season. In 1813, the Blue Mountains were crossed to the fertile plains beyond. Grain production kept pace with the growing size of the colony, and developments in the field of sowing and harvesting machinery followed. Smith's stump jump plough and McKay's harvester were major inventions. In 1810, 10,000 acres of wheat were sown. 1860, 644,000 acres. 1890, a disastrous year for the industry. Losses from rust alone exceeded $4 million and millers were forced to import grain. In 1890, but the work of William Farrer regenerated the wheat industry. Farrer bred strains suited to Australian soils and climates, resistant to rust and drought. The yield was trebled, the declining industry expanded. Today, wheat is one of Australia's great primary industries. Plowing, sowing and harvesting are fully mechanised. Sowing takes place in each district when weather conditions are favourable. Rain at the right time after sowing is essential for germination of the seed and thus for a successful harvest. Variation in soils, climates and topographical conditions makes it possible to produce many varieties and grades of grain. Over 20 million acres of Australia, yielding more than 400 million bushels of high-quality wheat.
farmers take advantage of the work of research scientists to improve wheat varieties and increase yields. Cross-pollination and the testing of resultant crops lead to the development of better varieties of wheat. Soil testing, in depth, is a guide to farming techniques. Wheat is tested for resistance to frost. In a few small areas, irrigation eliminates the farmer's dependence on rain at the critical stages of crop growth. Aircraft are used to apply fertilizers and chemicals. Legumes are planted to increase the nitrogen in the soil. Mixed farming techniques contribute to economic stability by eliminating the farmer's dependence on wheat only. The running of sheep cleans the furrows and enriches the soil. Wheat grown on research farms under rigidly controlled conditions is harvested for testing. tests determine the characteristics of the grain and of the flour made from it. All bulk storages are protected from weevils and other insect pests by the application of residual insecticide. Similar methods are used for farm storages. Harvesting the wheat. The gathering of the grain from the standing crop. Threshing it from the stalk and husks. Winnowing to separate it from the chaff and straw. Modern harvesters do all three within one machine. Over 400 million bushels of wheat, 11 basic grades grown in the five mainland states. Prime hard and hard grains, fair average quality or FAQ, and soft wheats. Some grain is retained in small silos on the farm to be used as stock feed or as seed for the following year's crop.
Most, however, is loaded into trucks for transport to district bulk silos. Before going into storage, a sample from each consignment of grain is tested for quality and type, cleanliness and weevil infestation. Bulk storage of the grain lowers costs and speeds handling. Bulk handling authorities are in charge of the storage of the wheat according to its type and quality. But from the time it reaches the bulk silos, the grain becomes the property of the Australian Wheat Board. Constant checks are made to maintain the quality of the wheat. Wheat towns have arisen in response to the needs of the man on the land. the need for agricultural equipment and supplies, clothing and provisions, essential services and luxuries. The prosperity of many country towns throughout Australia is bound up with the expansion and prosperity of the wheat industry. The Australian Wheat Board, composed of representatives of growers and government, is responsible, on behalf of all growers, for maintaining grain quality during storage and for its sale to buyers in Australia and overseas. The functioning of the Wheat Board, which meets regularly in Melbourne, is basic to the regulation of the whole industry, and thus to the prosperity of the wheat grower. The grain sold to the flour mills is cracked and gradually reduced to release the endosperm at the core of each seed the endosperm becomes white flour. Wholemeal flour includes some of the outer layer, while bran and pollard come from the outer casing of the grain. Flour used to make dozens of kinds of food. Bread, biscuits, cakes, noodles, spaghetti. Numerous grades of flour to make a wide variety of foods. Bakeries all over the world produce bread, a staple diet. everywhere make biscuits. 
different countries, different tastes and styles. At the Bread Research Institute, various types of wheat and flour are tested to determine those best suited for making the variety of pastries, breads and biscuits. From various regions come different grades of wheat, some with a high protein content, whose flour is especially good for making bread, other softer grades with less protein, more suitable for biscuits and noodles. The influx into Australia of people from other nations has meant an introduction of varied influences on traditional Australian eating habits. This vast industry calls for highly geared transport from silos to terminal ports and overseas destinations. The Department of Railways in each state derives a considerable proportion of revenue from the bulk transport of the grain. Australia, the world's third largest exporter of wheat. Hundreds of millions of bushels go to many countries, earning millions of dollars of foreign currency each year. A price stabilization scheme largely eliminates the economic risk from wheat growing. At Lumut in Malaya, the recently built flour mill is indicative of the trend towards wheat foods in many parts of the East. Bread is becoming more popular in some of the traditional rice-eating countries. The Australian Wheat Board maintains overseas offices, through which it ensures that its marketing policy caters for selective buyers within the fierce competition of the world's wheat markets and provides its customers with the type of wheat they need. The Pacific Area Office keeps in touch with trade to Japan, Hong Kong, the Philippines and Okinawa. The Australian Wheat Committee in London is responsible for sales and negotiations in the United Kingdom, Europe and the Middle East. Australian Wheat for British Cakes and Scones. Indian chapatis made with wheat. Australian wheat for noodles and in Japanese sukiyaki. Chinese sa siu pao from Australian grain. Malaysian mi. As world population grows, international cooperation will become more important in feeding all peoples, and Australia's vast wheatlands will continue to be a source of one of the world's major staple foods, wheat. <laughs>